So before we get into some sample problems, let's look a little more closely at PV equals nRT, our new favorite equation, uh, also known as Pivnert. So PV equals little n, big R, big T. This R, the gas constant, we haven't mentioned what the value of that is yet, and the value depends on what units it's measured in. So one of the common values is 8.3014, and that's if it's in standard units, which is joule, joules per mole Kelvin. But probably more often, we will use the value 0 0.0821, and that's if we're measuring it in liter atmospheres. Atmospheres is a measure of pressure uh, over mole Kelvins. Okay. Uh, a couple other things we need to be familiar with. Often we'll say that the gas is at standard temperature and pressure, which is abbreviated STP. Uh, standard temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, uh, but whenever we plug into an equation, we need to plug in Kelvin temperature, so it's going to be 293. Standard pressure is one atmosphere, so that's kind of the average barometric pressure at sea level. Uh, th those aren't standard units, though. So that's equal to 1.013 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared, or pascals, because a newton per meter squared is a pascal. Now, if you look at these, we've got energy units here, and then I've got pressure times volume. This is an L here, but these actually work out to be the same because if you remember, well, not, a, not, not exactly the same, but this is also pressure times volume. If you remember, a joule is a newton meter, and then if I divide this or multiply it by a meter squared over a meter squared, so I get a meter squared down here, ah, and a meter squared. Well, a newton per meter squared, I just told you, is a pascal. Oh, it was newton meters to begin with, so that's meters cubed, sorry. So this is pascals times meters cubed. I don't know why I like to reverse things I do. Okay, so pascal is pressure, meters cubed is a volume. So this is also a pressure times a volume. Uh, we also need to look at this N, which is the number of moles. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Basically, in the problems you're going to be solving, you're going to give you're going to be given some number of grams of a given element. So let's say we have 40 grams of helium. Uh, well, if you look up on the periodic table, what we call the atomic mass of helium, it's going to tell you 4, 4.002 or something like that, but we're going to be lazy and we're just going to use 4. Well, that number represents the mass of a single particle of helium measured in atomic mass units, which isn't going to be useful to us, but it's also the mass in grams of one mole of, <clears throat> of helium atoms. So that 4 is also grams per mole. So if I have 40 grams over 4 grams per mole, the grams cancel out, and the moles are going to come upstairs, so this is going to be 10 moles of that sample. And typically this is all you're going to have to know how to do for our mole calculations. We're not going to use Avogadro's number very often. Um, no promises, but he, m most of the time we're going to be doing things like this. Another thing you'll need to be aware of, if it says like oxygen gas or nitrogen gas, um, some of you haven't had chemistry. Those are typically what we call diatomic molecules. So if oxygen gas is listed, that means it's O2. And let's say we've got 100 grams of oxygen gas. Well, if you look up oxygen's atomic mass on the periodic table, it's 15.999. We're going to, guess what, round to 16. But since I have two of them, I do need to multiply that by two. So this is going to be grams per mole for a molecule of oxygen gas. And we can still just have 100 divided by 32 and end up with slightly over three moles of oxygen gas. Uh, one last thing that we need to know is the difference between what's called gauge pressure and absolute pressure. So if you have a pressure gauge, like a tire gauge, uh, if you've ever used one of those, there's a little pin in the middle that gets engaged when you put it on the stem of your tire. Well, if you use your key or if you got a long enough fingernail or something and engage that um, pin, that tire gauge isn't going to read one atmosphere of pressure, even though there is one atmosphere, approximately, 
of pressure in the air, it's going to read zero. So that's gauge pressure. Uh, what we call the absolute pressure is equal to the gauge pressure plus one atmosphere. Okay, because if gauge reads zero when there's really one atmosphere, we have to add one atmosphere to any gauge pressure to get the absolute. So uh, if your tire gauge reads 20 psi when you put it on your tire, it's actually 20 psi plus one atmosphere is the actual pressure in there. But there's also an atmosphere on the outside. So gauge pressure is useful because it tells us the difference between the pressure usually inside a tire or a tank and the pressure outside the tank. And that's, we want to plug in absolute pressures whenever we're using uh, PV equals NRT. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so let's go ahead and jump into a problem here. I think those are all the details we need. So you've got five liters of a gas at STP, so that's standard temperature and pressure. And <clears throat> then we increase the pressure to 2.8 atmospheres. So it was at one atmosphere because that's standard pressure. And the temperature of the gas goes up when we do that. That tends to happen when we compress gases. And we want to find what the new volume of the gas is. So this is one of those situations where we want to rearrange PV equals NRT. And we're going to do this often, where whenever we're comparing two states, so we have the same gas and we're looking at it you know, at one situation and then comparing it in another situation. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange this and set all the variable stuff on one side and the constant stuff on the other like I showed you in that other video. So in this case we're changing pressure so that stays over here. Uh, we're changing the volume because we're trying to find the new volume and the temperature also changes so we'll put that over here. So that just leaves N and R. R is always constant but N gets to stay with it now so this guy's a constant. So we can make our own little equation here P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2 and then we can just start plugging in things well our original pressure was standard pressure and when we have um, when we have ratios like this that we're comparing the units don't matter because they'll cancel out or just whatever units we put in on one side will get out of the other side. The exception to that is the temperature because with pressure and volume you're just multiplying by some factor but with temperature you're adding and so if you do this in Celsius versus Kelvin it, it's not it's not a linear conversion so it's not going to give you the right answer. You can try it in Celsius and you'll get different numbers. So make sure that your temperatures are always in Kelvin all the time otherwise pressures and volumes can be in whatever units you want when you're using PV equals NRT in this uh, manner. If you're plugging directly into this say you knew uh, <clears throat> three of the variables and you're solving for the fourth then you have to watch out for units and make sure that you, the units you're plugging in match the units on R or convert things to, to get them to work out. Alright so back to plugging in here pressure one is one atmosphere initial volume was five liters and the initial temperature was standard temperature so that's 293 in kelvins Okay, the pressure goes up to 2.8, and if it doesn't say gauge pressure, then we assume that this is the absolute pressure. So we'll just go ahead and use 2.8. Uh, the new volume is what we're trying to solve for, and the temperature rises by 42 degrees Celsius. Well, a degree Celsius is the same size as a degree Kelvin, so it also went up by or not degrees Kelvin, I said we can't use that, right? Uh, same as a Kelvin, so we can add 42 Kelvins to that, and we just have to solve this little guy here for V2. So make sure that you rearrange things correctly. This guy is going to come upstairs here, so we've got 293 plus 42 over here that joins our 5 times 1, so we can just leave that as a 5. Downstairs we've got 293 and then that 2.8 divides over and plug that into our calculator and we get just about 2 liters is the new volume of gas. So we had to compress it quite a bit. Alright, one more example. We'll keep it short this time. 
Here we've got a 20 liter tank, contains 100 grams of CO2 at a gauge pressure of one and a half atmospheres. What is the temperature of the gas? So here we're not comparing the gas at one state to the gas in another state, so we're not going to rearrange PV equals NRT and uh, <clears throat> have the constants on one side and the variables on another and whatnot. Here we're just going to plug directly into PV equals NRT, but we've got to be careful of our... Uh, of our units and we also don't have n in uh, in moles that's not given so we're gonna have to solve for that so we're gonna plug into this guy but we've got to do some rearranging first um, <clears throat> 100 grams of co2 I'm gonna come over here I want to find my moles so I'm gonna take that 100 grams and divide it by the uh, <clears throat> atomic mass of co2 so we've got one carbon that's got an atomic mass of 12. We've got two oxygens, and as we saw earlier, those were 16. So we're going to have 32, 42, 44. We're going to have 100 over 44, uh, which is right around 2.27. But we want to be careful with intermediate rounding, so we'll just go ahead and plug in 144 moles, or sorry, 100 over 44, uh, into our equation over here. Now the pressure also, this was given in gauge pressure, and we want to plug in the absolute pressure, so we have to add an additional atmosphere to this. And we also need to pay attention to our units. Uh, it's not written over here, but uh, one of the values for R is 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Oh look, we're in liters, we're going to be in atmospheres, now we're in atmospheres, but we got to fix that to um, absolute pressure. We've got moles and we're just going to find the temperature in Kelvin. So don't have to do any unit conversions as long as we use this value for, for R. Okay, so plugging into this equation here, I've got 2.5 again because I have to add 1 to make it absolute pressure from gauge pressure. Uh, the volume is 20 liters n is my moles, which is 100 over 44. I'm going to plug in, so I'll throw in some parentheses here, 0 0.0821 for R, and then we just solve that guy for T. So T is going to be 2.5 times 20 times 44 divided by 100, and also divided by our universal gas constant. And this works out to be about 267. Uh, my pen quit on me there. Come back. 267.97. So might as well round this guy to 268 kelvins. All right, that's all there is to it. Enjoy.